the armature is based on this one and what I did is I used uh, Photoshop or Paint Shop or whatever took a basic picture including the scale um, the, the original model is about 10 inches tall and then I scaled it up to be a one quarter scale so the printout is a one to one at one quarter and then I've also got this figure that um, was a lot cheaper so I don't mind getting it all clay and dirty and stuff like that so I'm going to use that for my main reference for basic shape and size and we'll just have her hang out there um, the details here the head was twisted uh, aluminum fencing wire which I'm using for my armature wire the rest of the body is a couple pieces of uh, just straightened coat hangers I got two T-nuts in the feet to hold it down. Uh, that wasn't totally successful, and so on one of them down there, I've got a piece of wire stuck down through. Uh, the aluminum wire bends fairly easily, but isn't very strong, so if you start twisting it, it breaks fairly quickly. The main two wires that come from the feet up, I soldered them together with a torch, and that seemed to hold. That stiffens it up a little bit. Uh, the armature that I'm using here is just enough to build a clay from, and I'll probably save it. So I got aluminum for the head loop, coat hangers, and T nuts. So again, this is one quarter scale. The small figure is one sixth scale, which um, matches the GI Joes. Cut it in half, and then each side should weigh about the same. So then you'd make the shape, there's your leg, and the other one should equally, or you know, should automatically be about the same size. For my references, it should be a wedge and then a wedge out for the hips, so maybe we can do some of that at least. Make a hip wedge, right, that's upside down, it should wedge in. It's hard to get started because it looks so wrong can't even imagine it. So you look at the videos and you figure out, okay, you know, like figure out your basic proportions. And then it's kind of cool because all of a sudden it starts to click and then you get your confidence and you're like, oh, okay. And then you kind of, from there you can tweak it and it's like, okay, does this look right or not? But when, in the beginning it looks so wrong you can't even get there. So like for instance, on our upper body, when you get to the apex, this is the shoulder outline right now, and I built it based on a picture that I scaled to the right size. So we know that the body is going to taper down. Hey, look at that. And we blend the pieces together so they don't all fall apart when I'm not looking. Now to do that, you just got to make sure there's enough heat in the clay and you just work it to warm it up a little bit. Okay. And the idea is the V should kind of bisect the balls and the shoulders. More or less. It gives you kind of a proportion and then here's your waistline. Ribs. Okay, I got a head there. I think it's probably a little bit big right now for scale. So, um, I got a cross on the face. That's at center, and so eye sockets pushed in. Forward for the jaw. The eyes is the edge of the mouth. Huh. 
quick shot of the face. Bulk out the outside of the hip because the the wire should have ran a lot further out. I came into a V and they should have hipped out and then down. Frickin' mummy or a zombie or something like that. Okay, you gotta get something like this in. Just, I mean, literally a minute after I shut the camera off, the whole thing just tipped forward. Uh, T nuts stayed attached to the board, and um, the wire is just pulled forward. So, it is pretty heavy now. So, it's, it's really heavy. Okay, that seemed like a really good time to take a lunch break. <laughs> In case it gets missed on the last one. The armature broke loose from the base plate. Like, completely. What I had done, um, not very brightly, the wire loops were... So the T-nuts... Let me get this right. I'd set it up. So the T-nuts were like so bo uh, bottom down, so they're upside down really. They're upside down. <laughs> yeah, duh. Note to self, I was doing it this way because that makes, it's made it flatter. It seems like it makes sense. Put the flat side down. But they're going to be pulling down, so there's nothing to hold them. So you got to make sure when you put them on, Put them upside down so that they pulled down against the wire loop because the wire loop I ran it through right up against the barrel. So there you go. Fix it. Shoulders too big, hips too narrow. Alright, see if we can fix the hips then. Okay, the hips are inverted. is my hips, I mean my shoulders are way too wide. Next time you make an armature, get it really close. Alright. Oh, it's even smarter. <laughs> I was just going to chop them off, but that's a dumb idea. Yeah, why is it every time I go looking for something? actually here already. Somewhere. Oh come on, I know I used to work that way. This could be a whole show unto itself. Aha, I find it. Add the outsides of the legs, make it look like the hips are coming from the right spot. I 
ignore the feet. They're not going to be part of the casting. Not a bad set of legs, though. Yeah, okay, so we'll match, make that leg match, and then we'll go up again. And I've got clay on the camera. Nice. Alright. And yes, kick the tripod that makes it real. Not a terrible chest, I don't think. She's really skinny in here. Really skinny. I should probably make more rib cage. That would make sense. Decent back. I think I'm okay with the thighs and the butt. It's a good size. Maybe a little skinny there, but. Okay, I'm gonna call this done for the first version. Okay, last look. What my plan is. My arms and legs and head are going to be separate pieces. So now that I've done the sculpt, I want to do casts so I can duplicate. But uh, the legs and arms aren't going to be used. I actually took the arms off already because uh, last week, late at night, I was getting ready to make the mold and just didn't feel like I was ready for it. So I decided to wait. So my thinking is, I'm going to cast just the torso, probably about here. Um, think about that for a bit. I'm going to take the head off, take the legs off, take what's left of the arms off. I think I'm going to chop it right off at the, at the shoulder ball. Leave the neck, chop the head off. Legs. I might cut the V and then the legs will fit right into the hips. So let's mark that. I think what we're gonna do, leave some of the hip, cut the V. Something like that. And then the shoulder balls. Like so, like so and the head. Okay, here we've got the torso in a two liter bottle sitting on a clay bed to give me a flat bottom, flattish. I'll do the math in a minute. I added some clay filler to the sides just so I don't use as much silicone. Hopefully I've got enough silicone to fill that. It should fill to the top and then I'll peel it apart and pour from the bottom. I just wanted to get a shot of this before uh, something happened and I lost it or something like that. So there it is. Cast a few super blocks in there. And then here is the figure. I did that in about four separate batches because my cup isn't big enough. And then what I have left in the cup, I just pushed some Legos down into it, just to see what we get. This has been almost half an hour, and it looks like it's firmed up pretty nicely. I think I got a good mix there. I don't think I have any soft spots, hopefully. Okay, this one I think I win. Um, there's the original clay. Got pretty mangled coming out. Could probably fix it. Don't really need to, though. The mold came out really good. Doesn't I don't think I have any soft spots in there. Feels like it cured up really nice. Good bust. Or whatever you call it, torso probably. Um, I cut the zigzag like I learned on the internet. So it goes right back together. A couple rubber bands or maybe some tape. I'm gonna do a wax in there I think and see how it turned out. 
And then the other, these are the Lego block backing plate molds and a couple super blocks. Melting some paraffin wax. And we got our form rubber banded together. That should probably hold it. Okay, we are just about done this piece. Three hours, 54 minutes. It's going to have three servos on the top, the shoulders and neck, and then down at the bottom, we've got the two, two hip servos. Okay, so what we've got here, I made a chassis that was 3D printed. So the whole white piece, except for the Lego on the bottom, is one print. And it's translucent enough that you can actually see the servos inside, which is kind of cool. So I've got the bottom two are going to be for hips, shoulders, and neck. And I got hot glue blobbed everywhere. And that's holding the servos in. I see I, um, when I printed it, I left open channels for the wires to come out. I'm going to have to adjust the print just a little bit. I had to trim a little bit to get this to work, but it was pretty close. And then I just blobbed hot glue, hold the wires in place, and I glued a Lego on the bottom so that I can set this on a base. Now, size-wise, this should work with a one-quarter scale character. So this is the torso that I made clay molded originally and then this is cast out of paraffin wax. I made a mold from the clay and then I can just run more of these wax characters now. Now the body pretty darn near fits on that layout. So that's a good starting point.